it's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if the wise men kept walking after Jesus' birth, still following the star of Bethlehem? Well, I guess it depends what the star actually was. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't think you know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. This question comes from N. Murdoch, who was thinking about how the three wise men in the Christmas story followed a star to Bethlehem where they found the baby Jesus. The question is, what if you did walk toward a known star at a fixed speed? What path would you trace on the Earth? <laughs> Sirius is the brightest star in the sky other than the sun. If the wise men left Jerusalem on December 25th, 1 AD, and walked towards Sirius day and night, even when it's below the horizon, this spiral is the path they follow over the surface. So the first thing that comes to mind is we're assuming they walked at normal human pace, three to four miles per hour. They're not, say, keeping up with it as it goes to the other side of the Earth. So sure, this little spiral, slinky-like path kind of makes sense due to the curvature of the Earth. This sort of thing still perplexes me, though, why they are people that claim the Earth is flat, whereas people back then knew about this sort of stuff. It's... The spiral is determined by how far a person can walk in half a day. Sure. If we allow a little theological confusion and assume that the wise men can walk on water, they'll eventually wind up going in an endless circle Maybe. 30 kilometers in diameter around the South Pole. But let's be a little more realistic. The wise men are hardly gonna walk toward the star while it's behind the Earth. Let's assume they only walk toward the star while it's in the sky and the sun has set, but they can still walk on water. Okay. In that yeah, and we're gonna add the thing if it's a clear, visible night, and it's not super cloudy and you can even see the star. Though, I guess it's a, it's a magical star, maybe it can appear. Maybe you can see it through clouds. I know there's multiple theories about what the star of Bethlehem actually was as far as astronomical events. Their path actually takes them through Bethlehem. If they don't stop there, after a few years, they wind up circling Botswana. Keep going. <laughs> These paths are calculated using, among other things, Pi FM, which provides tools for determining the historical positions of astronomical objects. It's cool. tricky to figure out exactly what the wise men would have been following. There aren't very many good astronomical candidates for the star of Bethlehem. Chinese records don't show a supernova yeah. at the right time, and none of the other obvious candidates really check out. Yeah, Haley's comment that's doesn't really do it. I wonder if any planets were aligned back then. And if they would have had a sense, say, if like Jupiter and Saturn were aligned, it showed up extra bright if people accounted for that back then. You know, some planets are visible with the naked eye, but... Furthermore, there's a lot of historical and theological debate over Jesus' date and even year of birth. 112 BC, I haven't heard that one. Adding to the confusion is uh, no year zero going straight from 1 BC to 1 AD in this video are all calculated for a somewhat arbitrary departure date from Jerusalem of December 25th, 1 AD. Different departure sure. dates would lead to different paths, but the overall picture would be roughly the same. What if the wise men followed a planet? Planets move against the background of stars, so yeah. the paths they produce are more complex. Here's where the wise men would have gone if they followed Venus. I like that they mapped that out. That's really cool. And here's their path for Mars. Yeah, a bit squirrely and also really far. This sort of moving toward a celestial object, it's kind of like a control system just chasing a moving set point, albeit temporarily, and this, in this case, your controller has a dead band during the daytime. Kind of like in a nuclear power plant, some of them were actually designed with load following capability. That's much less common because it's kind of a pain because constantly raising and lowering power can cause... The concentration of xenon-135 to change in a reactor. Now, xenon-135 is a common fission product of uranium-235, but the challenge with it is it's a reactor poison. That is to say, it has a much higher chance of absorbing a neutron and just turning into uranium-2 and just turning into xenon-136 than uranium-235 has of fissioning. So the end result is Xenon-135 concentration goes up, reactor power goes down. And when you're at equilibrium at 100% power, the Xenon-135 concentration is stable, so it's not that big of a deal. But when you have to constantly adjust, raise, and lower power, it becomes a pain, and it usually affects the next shift based on the timing. So if the guys on day shift ended up raising reactor power, the guys on night shift have to deal with the xenon, even though they're the guys that didn't actually raise the power. It can be kind of 
So the point is you have to have a reactivity brief to prepare from one shift to the next. But anyway, these wise men constantly adjusting their path for the star, it's just like reactor control system is constantly adjusting control rod height, or in the case of a pressurized water reactor, uh, boron concentration over the course of core life. Usually that's pretty easy if you're sitting at 100% power, but if, it's, but if your load follow and the star moves erratically, that is to say the grid demand moves erratically, yeah, you have to carefully manage control rod positions and boron concentration of when to add acid or when to dilute acid. Now, a lot of systems operate well in automatic in a nuclear power plant, but periodically throughout a shift, you do manual adjustments, like just moving a control rod, say, half a step, or dilution of the reactor coolant system by one or two parts per million. So a lot of slow course corrections over time in the case of operating a nuclear power plant. How they apparently look for the baby Jesus atop Mount Everest, which I guess is a logical place to check if you assume he's descending from... Yeah, that's certainly possible. <laughs> Highest point. And, ...and stopping at the first land he reaches. If the three wise men had a hover car that could move at highway speed over land and water, maybe it's in the Gnostic Gospels somewhere, and they decided to follow Venus, they would take a particularly weird... I mean, that would illustrate the, uh... That would be a faster course correction, and that... You could say that analogy is better for automatic adjustments, because control rods do move faster in automatic, typically, if there's a big enough adjustment in power or temperature that you need. So, yeah, it's essentially giving you a faster response controller. At one point, they wind up near the North Pole in October. There, the Sun and Venus spend months near the horizon, rising and setting, nudging the Magi into a month-long around the pole, a chaotic strange magi attractor which would provide a more theological foundation for the story of Santa Claus. Sadly, the That's three wise amazing. men probably weren't following Venus. It's one of the most familiar objects in the night sky, and as the late Sir Patrick Moore observed, if the wise men mistook a new star, they couldn't have been very wise. That's interesting. Though yes, you compare the wisdom of the wise men to the wisdom you need to get your reactor operator license in order to successfully control your reactor. But yeah, the real limit of these guys would just be survival and logistics. And if they have supernatural powers, well, they might be able to do this indefinitely. Who knows? But maybe they're wiser than Sir Patrick gives them credit for. After all, if you pick a random star in the sky, point at the horizon, and predict that there is a baby about to be born in that direction, statistics and birth rates <laughs> are on your side. That's true. This is one of the few examples of their videos where the net population actually went up rather than down. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.